I guess we might as well get started. Uh, let's see. We had your cultural competencies, which hopefully you read for today, because we're going to get in our groups and talk about them. Uh, let me just kind of look. This is under our course documents, just to kind of show you where everything's at. Uh, I'm trying to go day by day uh, what we're doing each day. So at the very top, 312 course topics. Today, cultural competence, jigsaw, specific learning disabilities document below, an adolescent brain document below. I'll have um, all those documents for you in here. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to look at here? Field experience. So everybody has, of course, this sheet here. So you've all been placed, I believe. Has anybody not been placed yet? Okay. Um, has anybody been in the school? Yeah, oh, here's the pure flex. So somebody in here. Let's somebody, let me see here. Okay. Angelina, you haven't gotten one. Uh, you should be getting something. If you haven't gotten it yet, they know that you need one. So, uh, um, is coming. There's one or two that haven't been placed. That's why I was kind of surprised no one raised their hand yet. Okay, so there's two. Okay, I, Issa, I thought you did. I last time you said you had one because you were excited you were going to high school. I guess that's not true, huh? It should be by email. Did you guys get an email? Everyone get Oh, you didn't? How did you find out? Or how did you find out? You got emails? And you haven't gotten a place yet then. Okay, I, I didn't think, I thought they were getting the placements out. I knew there were a few that they didn't. They said Tuesday or Wednesday they'd be emailing everybody. 
So you should be getting something by email. Oh, I see. You're back with middle school. <laughs> it's not what you wanted. Okay, anyway, because I thought most of you were. Let's just kind of go over this again. What the expectation is. Next week, I'm hoping that everyone will be able to go out into it. Um, if you don't have a placement, just let me know. Um, this isn't anything to be worried about. Okay, if you think if you can't get you a placement right away, you know, just let me know. Okay, it's nothing to worry about. I don't think you're going to scramble to catch up or anything like that. If I have to, I would just reduce what you have to do this week. Okay. Uh, so hopefully next week, hopefully you, those that have their placements, you can make contact this week. Hopefully you can get out next week. And here's the general um, format. Again, the first three weeks, you really aren't doing much for what the teacher wants you to do. So you're going out two hours a week. Um, so for the first three weeks that you're out there, so it says weeks one to three, that means weeks one to three that you're out there. It's not our weeks in here right now. We're in week two. Um, just get used to the classroom. Uh, just aid the property teachers as, you, as they see fit. Okay. And so you're trying to understand what's going on in the classroom, get to know the students a little bit. The week four, you're going to begin to observe two other classrooms. So that's coming down, down the pipe. And then no learning environment and behavioral management strategies. And we'll start to talk about behavior uh, and the learning environment here. And then weeks five to seven, that's where you'll begin to do a motivational book teachers okay so I mean you could start that earlier if you'd like you could do more really what that's about those weeks five six six and seven is trying to get you up in front of the classroom okay for the first some of you might be the first time that you've actually been in front of the classroom teaching okay so that way you know the teacher's going to do 40 minutes but you're going to do five or eight minutes to introduce the lesson have something you know kind of special uh, we can talk about that when it gets closer motivational hook um, that would be, be strongly tied to the lesson that the teacher could even refer to during the lesson. Okay, so a lot of times when we do motivational hooks, a lot of times they're related to the lesson, but they're very weak in that, like they see a video that you never hear about it again for the rest of the lesson. And those are weaker hooks. I mean, you can still you can do those. The purpose is really to get you in front of the class and get comfortable in front of the class. But the strongest hooks are ones that the teacher consistently refers to once, two, three times during the lesson and says, remember how you did that? We, you did that with, you know, Miss Welling, you did that with her, and now we're doing this here. You see how it's related? That, those are the strongest kind. Okay, so these motivational hooks, basically you're just introducing the lesson to something interesting. Like, for example, you see these base 10 blocks up here. Okay, that, that they're on your desk. Now, those, those are for you today. Those are from... Those are from our, my last class. But anyway, a motivational hook might be if they were adding, um, if they were going to uh, add fractions, for example. Well, actually, you guys are middle school, so it might be, um, I don't think you'd be using these in a sixth or seventh grade class. Oh, actually, you could. Yeah, this, is, this was done for long division. So let's say they're going to do long division, which is this, for those of us that aren't don't quite remember that's long division. So let's say that's what your teacher was going to teach. Uh, and so they were going to do it all on paper and all on the board. And you'd say, okay, let me do a motivational hook. And so what you're going to do is you're going to represent 325 with these blocks and break them apart for the students and show them how that how you're going to break them into two groups. And then you're going to have that motivational hook, and then the students will go from there learning it what the teacher wants. Does that make sense? Okay, so that'd be a very nice motivational hook in a math class to have something physical that the students would actually be using or at least viewing like this. Um, so something like that. Any questions about that? And when it gets closer, I mean, you're free to uh, like bring like if the teacher, like, let's pretend like this is, this was week five, like, you know, you're supposed to do a motivational hook, you know, let's, let's say on Thursday, you're supposed to do a motivational hook and, and the teacher's giving you a, a topic and give you the lesson. You can bring that in here and we can talk about it. You can say, you know, I have no idea. This is on Napoleon, you know, and, and 
water. You know, what am I going to do? Am I going to bring in a sword? They won't let me bring in a sword. You know, what am I supposed to do? Okay. So that's what we can talk about it here. <laughs> there was one, uh, and you know, he, he was, he was uh, uh, well-intentioned, but he uh, was in the, uh, I think, Marines. And so he was a non-traditional student. He said, could I bring in, you know, a rifle that's, that's not, that's, you know, that's not operational. But no, no, you can't. Really, I can't bring it. But, you know, he's so familiar with it. Mean, he spent so much time with that, that to him. It's like, it's no big deal. It's like, no, no, you can't do that. You wouldn't get very far, yes. I have two questions. So you want us to just stick to about two hours per week? You can, well, you have to go at least two hours every week. So you can't like accumulate them all in the first like four weeks or something. Okay. And the reason is because as you're learning things in here, I'm going to want you to go out there and, and see those things. Okay. okay. So when it comes down to especially in the beginning, you're looking at the classroom learning environment, but we are, we are talking that much about it. You're just kind of getting the general and week four, begin to learn others classes. So that's going to be about week seven. So I'm not sure how much you're going to really get from this class to observe out there, you know, just saying, well, there's a bunch of students just sitting around doing stuff, you know, it's not going to be like that. But the later part, weeks 8 to 11, then you're going to again go out and observe those a little bit more. That's okay. why I need you to, does that make sense? Yeah. And then my second question is, so like, for all my field placements this semester and for these, I was only assigned one teacher. Is that, is that what's expected? If they can put you in one to do everything, then yeah. Okay, so I shouldn't have gotten like two other teachers, even though that's like the requirement of the class. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. The other two teachers, when you go out, that, that, that's a good question. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Because when you're in that placement, you just ask the teachers to see two others. Okay. And it doesn't have to be in your content area, because all you're looking at is the environment of the classroom. So if you're teaching social studies, you can go and watch a math class. And an English class, and that's fine because you're watching them to see what how they're they're managing the students. Okay, but you'll ask the teacher, your teacher, you'll ask them to try and find you two others. Yes. I know personally, like I'm the fourth grade classroom that we switched with another class. Can I stay with the same group of students, or? Uh, if you have a different teacher, yeah. Okay. Because they'll, they'll manage the classroom a little bit different. Okay. That's coming up. So hopefully next week you'll be able to go out there and, and start um, become acclimated to the class, get to know the class. Any other questions? Okay, let's see. I think you do you get to teach three lessons at, at the very end. You'll be using the ideas. That's another thing. You'll be using the differentiated ideas from this classroom as you build these lessons. Okay. How many have you guys taught any lessons? Full lessons already? About how many lessons have you taught? I taught like four. Two, four. Four okay. or five. Four or five. Okay, that's good. Three. Oh, that's really that's really good. Has anybody not taught any lessons? Okay, so that's kind of what I was expecting more that didn't teach than actually did. So this is meant to, you have not yet, Alex. Yeah, so that, that, that's kind of what we're doing here. I'm going to have to work with you a little bit about teaching these lessons and uh, creating the lesson plans just a little bit. Um, it's really meant to give you some kind of feedback from the teacher, some kind of confidence before you go into, most of you go into internship next fall. And then there you have to teach a lot of lessons. And so it's like going from nothing to internship. It can be kind of scary. That's what the, the students were telling me last semester. They're saying, you know, I haven't taught before, and I'm in this internship. And the internship, by the way, is very it's very gradual. It doesn't you don't start teaching like in week two or three. Okay, it's very slow. So matter of fact, you shouldn't be teaching until like week five or six, a lesson here or there. And you'll be at the you'll be at the school every day like two two and a half hours. So you have plenty of time to get used to the students, understand the situation, and then before you begin teaching. Okay, by the end of it, hopefully you're, you, you are 
the teacher of a single class. Okay, so you're probably going to be assigned to two classes, possibly three, and hopefully by the end, the last week or two, or, or the last maybe th three weeks, you will be the teacher of one of those classes and maybe of two. Okay, but it's very flexible. A lot of students don't get to that point, and it's okay. All right? Yes. So we stay with the um, same classroom. Yes. So you're with, this, if at all possible, you will be with the same teacher in your clinical practice. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's at all possible. That's what will happen. Now, there every once in a while, a teacher will say. I can't, I can't take this student because I have something like, like they're being evaluated in the next semester or they aren't getting along with the student. And the same with the student. Students say, you know what, this is not ideal for me. I'm having a lot of problems. You know, the teacher won't let me do this, won't let me do that. And so, okay, we got to get, get you moved. Okay, so it's all about you being successful out there. Any questions, any other questions for me? All right. Okay, cultural competence. So we're trying to become more confident in different cultures. Uh, and that's what you had to read. Uh, before we do that, I just want to say I've been looking over the unit plans. I mean, they look fine. Uh, I don't see any reason why someone wouldn't get full credit, okay, but I, I just haven't looked through them. I just have enough time to really, really look at them, but I see no problems with them. So I think you guys did really well. And that's worth one uh, quiz grade. All right, so we have the different cultural competencies. And we're going to do sort of like a jigsaw. I think we have like a group here and a group here and a group here. It wasn't something like that. You guys know what you, your groups were. So let's see. We have. This should be Latino is the first one. Who are the Latino? One, two, three. Okay, so the three of you need to get together. And I'm going to have something on the handout for you to take notes on to kind of, kind of share your information. Next group is American Indian. Who had the American Indian? I know I've got one from a student that couldn't be here today, so I've got one. Who are the American Indian? Is it at home? American Indian, Amanda, Angelina. Isa, someone had to be American Indian. Okay. African American, one, two, three. Okay, so the three of you see each other there. Asian Pacific. One, two, Asian Pacific. Anybody at home, Asian Pacific? Click. Okay, Angelina. All right. I'm trying to think, Angelina, how am I going to get you to meet with? Unless the two of you go online. I put you in a group, which I'm not sure I can. I'm not sure I'm that good right now at this. I haven't done it since last semester for the UN groups. So maybe I'll let the two of them. Where are the two? Randy and, okay, maybe I'll let you guys do it and then we'll compare notes with uh, Angelina. Okay? And then the last group, that's the remaining. Arab and Muslim. One, two, three. Okay. All right. So here's what I want you to do. And the sheet out. By the way, again, just so you know, cultural competence for those at home, it's the 
second one here says SKM. This sheet right here. So in your cultural group, identify each of the following. First off, the worldview or core beliefs of Native American or whatever the culture, you write your culture in there. Tells you what a world view means, what core beliefs mean. So that's what you're looking at from the information that you that you grab. Okay. The second one part is on the back of that is look at the graphic below. Would you describe your cultural group as closer to the individualism or the collectivism? Of? Okay. Given this, what impact will this have for you as a classroom teacher who has members for this cultural group? So you just answer that as a group. And does your cultural group use an oral tradition in which information is learned through storytelling, music, and social interaction, and explain? So basically, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to fill up that information, and then you're going to take it back to your group. Now, I think what we're going to do, rather than take it back to the group, since some, several of us are not here today, I think we're just going to compile something for the entire class. In other words, we're just going to I'll have you review what you found in your group. Okay? For the entire class. Okay, okay, line in your groups and it was no. American Indian, Alaska Native. Oh. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to email you um, what the one student gave me, um, their summary, because they couldn't be here today. Yeah. 
gets of uh, spirituality and um, Thank you. 
I just handed out this sheet that's right here. Okay, so those at home, you'll have to pull up this if you want to take some notes on the five on the five different um, cultural groups that we're going to talk about. All right, so what I'd like to do now is 
is that each group, so the volunteer, talk about your group, talk about the worldview, individualism versus collectivism, what this means for you as a teacher, and whether there's a moral tradition, music, storytelling, social interaction within this group. What we're trying to do is we're trying to understand each of the different groups. We have to be very, very careful, though, because just because you know you have this cultural group doesn't mean everybody who looks like they're from the cultural group or is even from that cultural group, in, in fact, shares these uh, different um, characteristics or traits. Uh, it, it's a lot of it's going to depend on. Um, you know, how you were brought up, if, if you, like for example, Latino, if they have been, uh, if the person has been in America very long, they could have, or they could have been in America longer than any of us. In other words, their family's going to have been in here, you know, since the 1600s, you know, or whatever, been living here. So, uh, you know, so it's just, it's very, I, I almost didn't hand this out as an assignment. I just wanted to see how it was going to go, if it was going to be useful. And you can tell me how useful you think this is going to be. I think it's, to me, just as I think about it, I think it would be generally be useful to know, to know those certain characteristics about different cultural groups. On the other hand, it could, it could bias us, too, to say, oh, okay, you know, you're Latino, well, then, you know, obviously you are Catholic. You know, it's like, oh, no, this is true. You see what I mean? There's like a balance here. It's like, you know, you understand your students and their backgrounds, but um, it, it's just, it's hard to put it all in, into the pages that you have there. Does that make some sense? So you have to be kind of careful with this. Uh, I think that our minds generally, we don't mean to be biased, but we try to, when you, when you, um, when you see anybody of a certain, whether, whether they're football players, they don't have to be like a cultural thing, so to speak. They can be a football player or a ping pong player or whatever, and you meet one, two, or three that are in that group, then you start to say, oh, everybody in that group, I mean, your mind naturally starts to make generalizations and categorizations. That's what you do. Okay, I mean, that's a very natural thing. We have to do that. Like, for example, if somebody walks up to you on campus right now, you assume they understand English. They don't necessarily have to, but that you just make that assumption because, and you can't just, you know, stand there and have like all these different languages to say, well, just in case, you know, you don't understand. Here's how I'm going to, do you understand English? You say it in Spanish, you say it in French, you say it in German, you know, you, you can't do that. So we, we do that, but then in general, it works for us, but then there are times when it can be very offensive too, that, you know, we, we made the wrong uh, assumption either about that person or that they're part of this group and they are part of this group or about the group we made the wrong assumption. Oh, everyone in this group does this. Make sense? So I'm not sure how to go about all this. But anyway, let's start with the Latino group. And so what you can do is you can take your sheet here that is handed out. And at the top you can write Latino. Latina. And who are our Experts on Latino and Latina. Where are they at? Okay, could you tell us a little bit about the worldview and core beliefs that you think, as us teachers, we should, we need to know? Yeah, um, for sure. So, a lot of the worldview uh, and core beliefs kind of stem from family. Um, a lot of it's kind of family centered, and there's a big commitment with the family, just period. Uh, just like a little thing to update with Latino or Latina, we're kind of going more with Latinx because Latinx is more gender neutral and kind of inclusive. So okay. L A T. I'll say that in Spanish. L A T I N X. I N X. Okay. Um. And in the terms of just like the census, we talked about, or they talked about Hispanic, but Hispanic is kind of very general because it just means that you speak Spanish. Don't do that. Use Latinx. Okay. Um, and the population growth within Latinx families um, are pretty high compared to, I guess, like white families. Um, and there's a very strong sense of honor and pride within the self, but also within the family, too. Um, and there's a lot of also just traditional values and gender roles, but I think that that really depends on what generation of families that you're from. Um, as someone who's like Panamanian American, a lot of the machismo and marianismo, which is like, Machismo is like 
being a big strong man. Ah, Mariani Simone is being like, I'm a woman who's 18, and like not flirty, like dainty and kind of sweet. So um, someone that was has only been in the United States for a very short amount of time, like the family or maybe 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and they had a child, and the child's out in your class, or they brought the, ch the child was brought with them, yes. they would have the strong tradition of men are like this, and women are like this. That, that would be kind of the way they would believe. So they might look at some of the things that, like in our, in our textbooks, that show females in traditionally male roles, and they might just be shocked by it, or at least maybe be uneasy, or not know how to that's what, kind of what you're saying, is that, especially the recent. Okay, that makes sense. Um, what else, what else? Oh, God families, like when people have God families up here, uh, that's kind of, there's a term for it specifically that they use within it. I've never used it within my family. We just call them like my theas and my dealers. They're still like seen as blood family, even if they aren't within the blood of the family. I see. Um, and there is a mix of spirituality with their Catholicism. Uh, they're usually seen as Catholics, but kind of as a way to balance out whatever Eurocentrism that is happening within their culture. Um, historically, there's a bit of spirituality with it too. So when you say that, in other words, like they're going from a traditional Catholic, Catholic view and saying, well, also there, I could see spirits, for mm -hmm. example, okay, okay, which are, the Catholic Church doesn't really believe, or I'm not really sure how to put it, um, it's not really a part of the Catholic Church that I know of. Okay. Safe. I'm not, I haven't been to church since I was like two, <laughs> or at least a Catholic church since I was two, so I'm not really sure. But, but if someone yeah. said from a traditional Catholic family, yeah. not Latinx, they would, if they say, oh, I saw a spirit or an image of, they might think something's wrong with you, as opposed to Latinx would say, oh, you know, they take it very seriously. Yeah. Like it's, like it's very possible. Yeah. Okay. Like, that's very interesting because you have, you could have a, a student in your class that's talking about this and you, you're thinking, well, they're out there, but this is very normal and, the, and this is very um, special in their, from their, in their family. Yeah. Okay. Um, and older generations of Latinx families had like segregated, segregated schooling, but here in like, United States, that school is not really apparent. Um, I think the most that really will notice is when students are like out at lunch and maybe they hang around with more people who are Latino, but maybe like Puerto Rican. I grew up in a very Latinx like community, so all the Puerto Ricans would sit next to each other, the Panamanians would sit with each other, the black kids would sit with each other, the Asian kids would sit with each other. Sometimes there'd be mixes between, uh, but specifically with Latinx like groups, that kind of just happened. Don't know why, it's just uh, hmm. part of the experience. Interesting. Okay. Um, and the emphasis on school, I think, differs. In the text, it said that we didn't really give them a chance because we kind of put in that myth and that stereotype that Latinx kids don't really care. So um, it differs, I think, between familial cultures and just what is within the community itself. Because I come from a family that really heavily influences, like, or emphasizes academics because we didn't have that. Or that was really emphasized when they were growing up. So they're like, yeah, you do it because we are now here in America. But maybe for families that are not like, that are past that generational, oh, we we're here from America, we came here to be in America. Um, probably that's just like as normal as a white kid. I'm not really sure. That's not when I'm around, but that's what I can only really assume. I see. Okay. All right, very good. Thank you. Okay, what about uh, individualism versus collectivism? So we said that it was definitely more of a collectivism driven culture and I would say for a teacher this we kind of all agreed that it would definitely be some it would be a good idea to promote group time group work group collaboration and make sure that the family is involved and to be open to grandparents aunts uncles things like that being an active part of the students schooling and then it's important as teachers also that we understand the expectations and pressures that um, students that are um, Latino may face and at their home life as well and how that would affect kind of like their drive and their expected duties and things in school. Okay. Um, oral tradition, music, storytelling, social interaction. Any, they talk anything about that? It's possible they did, you know. 
Okay. I did, but again, being raised, I bring a lot of family stories uh, to the classroom and just like family things that we learn. Like I know stories from my family, like being past my great, great, great grandma and like going as far back as when we weren't even in Panama to like when we were in a different uh, country that was still within like South America and then moving to Panama and then moving to America. So uh, yeah. I don't know if every family does that, but it's what mine does. Did it talk about like, like the migrant workers, like like the, the, the students, maybe you might get a student that's been in several places, you know, in the past five years. They talk at all about that? Not really. They mentioned okay. like the drive to kind of work hard uh, based on like Cuban marches or what is it called? Let me try to find it. I'm so sorry. They were talking about different factors of cultural uh, pressures, such as bilingualism, immigration, uh, intergenerational and cultural conflict, poverty, racism, cultural identity, so stuff like that. And then at some point, they transitioned to talking about kids uh, or what's better or what's more of a better example of that than kids who are coming to America. Okay. So, not really and then, so much. Then you have really a, a, a wide variety of Cuban, Puerto Rican, uh, Mexico, of course, Latin America, and so you really have a lot of different, really distinct, I guess, subcultures, so to speak. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay, so a teen X. Let's go with, uh, let's see, who was next? The uh, American Indian, Alaska Native students. I think Issa, is that you? I was surprised they called it American Indian. Instead of American, American Indian, they said, Isa, is that you? I think Isa's on. Oh, there she is. Yeah, I think I'm going to go this way. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'm just taking it. Let's go with our next group. Who do we have? African American? African American. All right. What do you have for us? Worldview? just uh, start by uh, talking about uh, with their family and cultural values. There's four factors that have uh, shaped their experience and culture. Um, one of them is uh, that, they're, that they brought like uh, a lot of cultures from you know, West Africa to America is what it said. And then it stressed the importance on uh, religious and spiritual values as well as co uh, cooperation in Interdependence, and then um, this uh, this side that they include also like three ways that teachers can be more understanding and cooperate with them would be um, to understand the cultural context of the family, uh, viewing the various differences in family dynamics and adaptive uh, strengths, and to develop practices that take into account uh, their needs, culture dynamics, and style of the culture. And then it talks uh, about these things called kinship bonds. And what that is is basically um, their complex kinship networks of blood uh, related people and people who are not related to them. Uh, and then another thing with that is that the, the, the 
members of their family are um, defined by the family. So even though like someone's like not related or not like blood related, like they're also a part of their like immediate family or or, or their extended family as well. They talk a bit, a bit about like the the roles of males and females in their society, and it says it calls African American males a peripheral to family functioning. And it says that um, that they uh, provide the time and energy required to provide the base and necessities for the family. And then it also says that um, African American females um, also tend to work outside of the home. And um, it also uh, says that African American females have been frequently been mislabeled as overly dominant because of that. And then um, another thing that they mentioned about a different role that wasn't mentioned in any other authors yet was something called the parental child. And what this is, is just an older child who has parental responsibilities when there are many um, younger children to take care of when the parents are both absent from home because they're both working outside the home. And then the last thing that I'll mention is about religion. And like I said before, it's a very um, integral and important part of their culture and then uh, and their religion can provide valuable source of social connection as well as self-esteem um, in times of stress and then also the leaders of the con congregations that they're a part of you know, may also become a part of the extended family and then uh, they are also sought after, after by these families for personal help and support as well as access to help in agencies and such. Child, that's an interesting thing because what, what you're saying is that it could be that you could have a, a, a student or class that is actually seemingly doesn't work, you know, 14, and yet they have a lot of responsibilities at home. This is kind of what you're saying. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, with their younger siblings. And therefore, I mean, so you just wouldn't expect that, at least, at least the traditional. American teacher wouldn't expect something like that and would wonder, you know, why aren't you doing your homework? You know, why aren't you getting this done? And so what you're basically saying is that this this um, parental child would have actually things that are much more important to them that they have to do. And then the schoolwork, which, you know, is important, of course, to, to everybody, but it's, it just isn't going to rate. they got priorities, let's put it that way. It can be very important, school can be very important, but they've got things that are more important. That. Okay. So you know, yeah, that's very interesting. Okay, so we're again looking at more cooperative. You know, it's interesting because in the United States we're a very individualistic uh, nation, and we um, and that and that translates into our schools, which historically have been very individualistic. So we had two groups now, right? Two that have been very much collectivist. Okay, which means they're being, what they're learning in their culture, in their home, they're learning as a way of, the way to learn is through interacting with groups. And then they come to school and they're supposed to learn on their own and their skills aren't set that way, and their beliefs aren't set that way. 
So, you know, it's a hindrance. You know? Very interesting. Okay, let's see. Who else do we have? Is there an Asian American? We need an Asian American, right? So, the biggest thing to know is about the family unit. And they hear it much more that everyone has to be translate into like pressure on the child then so yes, the child doesn't yes. do well in school yes. okay even if they're getting maybe even a B minus average or something that they aren't happy and so that puts a lot of pressure on there for a second because I mean that that's a, a really important point in that um, there are certain cues that we learn how to how to differentiate between people and so if you haven't been around like for example a lot of Asian Americans you know you, you, you see Asian Americans they're just they're all basically the same in a sense because if you haven't been around a lot especially when you're very young that you have to really learn the cues that separate like some of that that's from China versus Korea very clear to someone from China the difference between China and Korea, but for, for someone who hasn't been around, it's very hard to tell the difference. It's extremely important for them, though, because there's a lot of ancient animosities that carry on today, and that you are extremely offensive if you say to a Korean, you know, oh, you're, you're from China or something like that, or you see, or you, there's someone from China in your school. And some are, you know, related and Korean related, and you pair them up thinking, oh, they're going to like each other, which, you know, could be just, they, they could very much have this animosity towards each other. And of course, we don't want to pair somebody up just because they're looks anyway, but, but still, you know, you, but you're thinking you're doing something good. Oh, I want to help this, you know, because maybe they don't feel too comfortable here. Just the opposite. And if someone has to go to the ancient conflict, like I know that a lot of people, uh, like from China, they have a lot of people in Korea, and sometimes they'll have a little conflict towards each other, especially from like what happens in World War II, where the Chinese, the Japan was still annihilated villages and stuff, and then after the war, there's still the China came in and annihilated and stuff. So, like, it's very, it's an intense thing, so it's really easy to be Yeah. You have to be somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. So overall, they are like shown as this kids in that story, and they are known for their overall economic success, and they are overall seen as less threatening to white people in the front seat. Um, just because they seem to have taken some of our ways based on tradition and. Them and 
it was very interesting. They mostly focused on uh, the continental area. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, they didn't talk about what? They didn't really agree that a lot about music Asia, which is really interesting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so they really did focus a lot on the continental aspect of everything. And then the Pacific Islands area. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was really That's interesting. And that's our last group, right? Yeah. Everybody's. Oh, we have we have another group. What is your group? I'm sorry, can you say it? Oh, Arab Muslim. That's right. Okay. Okay, Arab Muslim. So they should they, they don't believe in like like effort necessarily equals success. It, it like says that you should like try to like become successful, but you should accept like what comes to you. Like they said that like everyone has like they that is like that. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of like um, if an individual is honored or shamed, then it comes from the whole family. So they're really big on like. Um, yeah, they, yeah, that's interesting. So they're so they're very family oriented. We have a few that are very family oriented. But Asian, they were family oriented. Yeah. And African American, they're, well, they're family. I think it's they all are. Interesting. Okay. Uh, what about individualism versus collectivism? Uh, we definitely said more, you know, collectivism, you know, there's emphasis on you know, the family, like you mentioned. Um, so, like, Arian did mention it, which is okay, but this covers uh, Arab Americans and Muslim Americans. Uh, not all Arab Americans are Muslim. Actually, a lot of them are Christian. Um, so, not all of them have, like, ties to both, you know, being Muslim and Arab. And not all Muslims are Arab Americans. So there's like, honestly, quite a lot too. So you have to consider that too. Like they have different values, like the values of Christians and of you know, Arabs, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, but that's like still collective. Um, you know, they do have a strong sense of religion. Uh, each of that kind of like service uh, for being together. So uh, that I mentioned, you know, being a teacher, obviously, you know, and then just being understanding of their, you know, need or desire to socialize in the classroom. Okay. So one of the common things is that we just need to use more group work. The other thing about that that's really interesting is that all that dress in the Muslim dress are the Arab dress. I think there is a big assumption that they are Muslim. And like to say Merry Christmas, oh, I'm going to say Merry Christmas to this, per to this person because they don't. And it turns out there's a huge population of Arab Americans that are Christian, that Christianity is a big part of the Middle East. So that's something that I think that the trap we can easily fall into. Because they don't share the same holidays that the Christians do. So, okay, well, a lot of stuff. I'm not sure what we can do with this, but we'll talk about it next time, how valuable it is, how accurate it is. And see, is there anything we can do with this? Should it even be in this course? You know, that's, that's one of the questions. So, all right. Okay, everybody have a nice couple of days. We'll see you on Thursday.
Yes, you said if we haven't gotten the place 